Hi guys, I'm Nancy, and I'm gonna show you how to do basic integration with the basic rules, some powers, some trig, the kind of stuff you'd find in a table of integrals. If you don't know what I mean by integration rules or a table of integrals, then you're in the right place. Let me show you how to do it. Okay, so say you have to find the integral or integrate. First of all, what do I mean by integration? So it's the reverse of differentiation. Integrating is the opposite of taking the derivative. So if a function gave us a certain derivative when we differentiated, then integrating it will be getting back the original function to get back up. So what we're integrating is the derivative of some other function that we will find. So even here, what we're integrating is the derivative of some other function that we will find, and that's the antiderivative, or indefinite integral, integral. This reads as the integral of 2x with respect to x, or antiderivative of 2x with respect to x. The dx differential just tells us that x is our variable of integration, that we're integrating with respect to x and not some other variable. And I will explain the plus c in a bit. So, for a polynomial like this, with a bunch of terms added and subtracted, we can integrate each term one by one, and then string them together for the full integral. So let's do it. So this first term is an x power, so we can use the power rule. And all that says is that if your power is not negative one, if it's any other power, the integral of x to the power is x to the power raised by 1 over that power raised by 1 plus c. So for x to the third power, the integral is instead of x to the third, it's x to the fourth over 4. And we can keep the subtraction here because of the sum and difference rules. This term also has an x power, but it also has this 6 multiplied out front. And anytime you have a constant multiplied out front, you can keep the constant and then integrate the rest. So we can keep the 6 and then integrate x squared with the power rule. So instead of x to the second power, it's going to be x to the third divided by 3. And we'll clean that up later. We can also keep the addition because of the sum and difference rules. What about x? Well, that is a power of x. There's this implied one or understood power of one. So if we use the power rule on x to the first power, it becomes x squared over two. And anytime you have just a constant term, the integral of that will just be the number times x, so the integral of 1 is 1 times x, or just x. And some people think of this as a separate rule, the constant rule, and other people think of it as the power rule. There is technically an invisible x to the 0 power here, so if you use the power rule on x to the 0, you get x to the 1 over 1. Any way you look at it, the Integral of 1 is 1 times x, or x. And by the way, if you ever saw something like this, there is an implied 1 there, so that is also the constant rule. The integral of this would just be x. And at this point, you may have a little bit of deja vu with some of these rules. A lot of these integration rules seem vaguely similar, but opposite to derivative rules, and you can pretty much reverse a lot of derivative rules and get the integration rules, but not all of them are similar and have a counterpart, like there's no product rule or quotient rule for integration. And we're not done. We have to add a constant plus c at the very end, and this is important, because we don't know if there was a number there 
originally, and if so, what it was. So we put this plus C as a placeholder, and it represents all possible antiderivatives. We put that there just in case there was a number there, like plus 2, minus 2, minus 10, whatever it was. So here it is, all cleaned up. Remember, this is the original function, higher level function we got by integrating. So if you want, you can check this answer by taking the derivative of it and you will get back your original integrand, even though there's this plus c here because remember the derivative of a constant is just zero. So that goes away. And in case you were wondering why I didn't put a plus c on every term as we went along integrating, it's a good question. It's just because it doesn't matter in the end. Like we could have done that, but in the end we'd still have all these constants that add up to one constant we still don't know, and we can still call that plus c in the end. So what about other kinds of powers? So maybe you knew it wouldn't always be so simple. What if you have a negative power, or a fractional power, or a negative fractional power, or a root? If you have a negative power, you can still use the power rule, as long as your power is not negative 1. So here, this negative 3 power becomes negative 2 with the power rule. That might be the opposite of what you would think. It's kind of counterintuitive, but increasing that by 1 makes it less negative, so it's negative 2. And I won't waste your time by dwelling on a lot of algebra here, but a lot of times it's considered simpler to not leave a negative power in your answer because why not? Here, same idea. If you can rewrite it as a negative power, do it. And you're going to start to see a theme starting here, which is if you can rewrite it as a power up top in the numerator, do that. Integrate with the power rule and then simplify. But don't get too comfortable because I snuck this one in here and maybe you caught it already, but Power rule is not defined for a negative 1 power. If you look in a table of integrals, it's actually equal to natural log of absolute value of x plus c. So that's what that is. And it might actually take this form too. You might see 1 over x, that's the same. So that's also natural log of the absolute value of x. And for this 1 fourth, this is important if you didn't already know this for integrals, but anytime you can pull out an overall constant out front, do that, and then integrate the rest. So this 1 fourth can be pulled out front and the rest integrated. If you're wondering why the 1 fourth isn't also on the plus c, thinking it should have been on the c, yeah, maybe. Um, but the thing is, we don't even know what c is. So even if we wrote 1 fourth c, it doesn't really mean much at this point. So we just call it c still. If you have a fractional power, you can still use the power rule. And again, I'm not going to insult you by, with a lot of algebra talk, but friendly reminders, adding 1 to a fraction when you get a common denominator, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. And what if you have a root in your integral? You might have already guessed, but you want to rewrite it as a power. So the square root becomes a 1 half power. Square root of x cubed is x to the 3 halves power. Cube root of x squared is x to the 2 thirds power. And then you can use the power rule after that. And from there, it's the same kind of integration we were doing before. I know you can handle that. But can you handle this? Yes, you can. Just rewrite it as powers, combine it. Oh, look, the power rule. Simplify, and that's your answer. You're still alert? That's amazing. So, no matter what crazy shape it takes when it's thrown at you, the pattern is rewrite it, integrate, and simplify. Rewrite it as a single power and use the power rule. So powers are your friend here. Roots, not so much.
And I know this seems like a way more algebra than integration, and it is. Guess what? There's more. So here, let's dial up the algebra. What do you do if it does not already look like something you know how to integrate, if you can't tackle it directly? Well, unfortunately, there's no quotient rule for integration. And no, you can't just integrate the numerator and denominator separately. That's not, no, that's not a thing. But you can try algebra. Since this is kind of top heavy, a few terms on top and one on bottom, you can break it into two fractions, separate the numerator, rewrite the roots as powers, and simplify. And I'm not going to hold you hostage with a lot of algebra here, but there's one thing that can be very confusing, which is why would this term simplify to positive one half, but this term simplify to negative one half? Well, if you think of it as x to the first and an invisible x to the zero, subtracting powers would give you one minus a half, positive one half here, but zero minus a half, negative one half there. So that's why. This one. There's no product rule for integration, but you can multiply it out, distribute it, FOIL it, and use the power rule on each term, and that's the answer. So the idea here is always trying to get it into a form that fits a basic integration rule. So I keep saying, basic integration rules, the basic integration rules, but so far the only one we've really seen is the power rule. You can find the other ones if you look in a table. If you look up table of integrals, you'll see trig integrals, like the integral of cosine is sine. A lot of these are the opposite of derivative rules, hopefully you know. So if the derivative of sine was cosine, then the integral of cosine is sine. And you'll see ones like this, the integral of sine is negative cosine. Why is that? Well, remember that the derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine is negative sine, derivative of negative sine is negative cosine, and then it circles back, the derivative of negative cosine is sine. If integration is the opposite operation, going the other direction, the integral of sine is negative cosine. Integral of that is a negative sine. Integral of that, positive cosine. Integral of cosine, positive sine. It's cyclical. The sine, cosine, derivatives, and antiderivatives repeat in cycles of four. So more trig, if you see things like these integrals of secant squared, cosecant squared, secant tangent, cosecant cotangent, these are things from the table of integrals. You can look up what they're equal to, like this is tangent, this equals negative cotangent, this is secant, this is negative cosecant. If you don't see something like this, but you see something like these, you may need trig identities. I know some of you have a love-hate relationship with trig identities, or a hate-hate relationship. They come up a lot in calculus, and here they can help you rewrite the integral in a form that you can integrate. So if you see tangent squared plus 1, that is secant squared. That might help you. 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared. Like here, in this integral, 1 minus sine squared, there's an identity that says that's cosine squared. And once you replace it, you're able to do more fancy algebra, separate this into tangent, essentially tangent times secant. Tangent times secant, that is an integral you find in the table. It's equal to secant. So my whole point here is that this is just a taste of things with trig, but you might need some combination of trig integrals that you find in a table and or trig identities in order to calculate what you're given. And then there are other things you'll see, like exponentials. So e to the x, integral of e to the x, dx is e to the x plus c. 
What if your integral is more complicated than what you saw here? Like larger forms, more things multiplied and divided. If you need things like integration by parts, use substitution, partial fractions, improper integrals, trig substitution, other techniques to fit it to an integration rule. How do you even know where to begin your attack on an integral? That's a whole other video because it's not so basic and it wouldn't all fit here. But you can always check out my other integration videos and I hope this helped you understand basic integration. I know calculus is exactly what you wanted to be doing right now. It's okay, you don't have to like math, but you can like my video, so if you did, please click like or subscribe.